Welcome to Level Up Chips Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Hey y'all, welcome back to Level Up Chips. I'm your host, Mike Gonzalez, and uh, we'll be talking about everything game related. That's right, folks. When we need to talk, say everything, uh, we mean everything. <laughs> this is the worst uh, intro we've done. I uh I apologize for uh, the host's, I guess, tiredness. It's been fine. It's it's finals week. We're both uh, nearly done. So I've only had four hours of sleep in the past two days. So you can only imagine that intro was probably the best you're ever going to get with this. Yep. So um, basically, uh, We'll we'll be talking about some of the the game news that's coming around. Not too much happening, but the stuff that is happening is really really big. Uh, one thing that I was really excited for, um, was the fact that Sony they have a Discord, uh, agreement. So pretty mm-hmm. much they will be putting Discord onto PlayStation Five, so you can talk with friends and it'll actually be like an app that you can use. Um, this will be coming around like 2022 and I am just absolutely excited just because discord is, I mean, easily one of the best, uh, uh, apps to use for actually talking with friends, texting them, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. I'm Uh, just glad that, uh, Microsoft didn't get their hands on it because, they usually end up running messaging apps into the ground from my experience. Yeah, no, it, any th- uh, there are a lot of applications that they have that have just, like Internet Explorer specifically, I still think about, I'm like, oh man, I, I don't want to see that in a, w- a long time. I mean, even more like relevant to Discord, Skype, like that just got dropped even right as the COVID pandemic hit because it was just inferior to stuff like Zoom and WebEx and all that stuff. It just doesn't work for anything. Like, nobody really thought about having, like, 50 people in a a web chat or something like that. But the fact that Skype was the biggest thing back in, like, 2012, 2013, Mm -hmm. and then they probably had the technology, the research to do something like Zoom, Yet they drop the ball so so quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a shame. Um, I, I'm I'm really excited for Discord specifically because um they have some screen sharing capabilities, right. and um I usually with like friends like Max and Nate, uh, one of my our friends, uh, what we usually do is get in a group together and sometimes we'll share gameplay of uh, like games on Steam. And mm-hmm. there have been a lot of times where I've been like, I want to show them a really cool thing like Returnal, Dang and like story novels um, or visual novels like Dang and Rampa, the the nine 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 series stuff like that. Right. Are there any games that you're thinking about um, showing if uh, <laughs> you get this Discord stuff? I don't know, honestly. Like, I don't really do streaming or like showing people other games because i can usually just explain it just fine but yeah it'll be a nice thing to have for people who do yeah yeah no definitely some exciting news some other really exciting news is that um epic games and the the apple court case is starting and it is starting to become a really really big uh historical event i think for gaming uh Mm -hmm. just because it is sharing a ton of details from uh, certain companies a lot of secrets that like sony nintendo they don't probably want uh the the public to know but because this court case is public and they have to use evidence to win their case epic games is really really putting out some stuff to pretty much uh win this case but in the uh meantime they are also burning a lot of bridges i feel like mm-hmm uh, yeah, I can I can see how that how, how that'd be the case considering uh, the collaborations they're appar- they they're apparently planning. So yeah, no, and and that's the biggest thing right now. There have been a lot of um, 
Fortnite collaborations that have been put out in the public that just didn't work. You know, it would be like, for some reason, Ariana Grande, Naruto, Samus from Metroid Prime in the Metroid series. Um, and I even saw like Hunger Games potentially being a, a collaboration, which I was like, okay, whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it's outside the realm of possibility for specifically for Ariana Grande, considering that she and Katy Perry were in a uh, Final Fantasy gotcha game that I played for a while. Yeah, that that was a weird thing. Everybody on Twitter usually talks about how Ariana Grande's in Final Fantasy it is confirmed. Yep, pretty much. Um, which is weird in and of itself, yeah. but also some other things that have been shared are like revenues for um uh epic which is really interesting because in 2018 fortnite was the uh main uh selling point for for epic making up uh 97 of their revenue which they had about like 5.7 billion bucks back mm -hmm. in 2018 meaning about like 5.6 billion was coming from fortnite from that information alone, I just wonder how much money they make users and like other game developers uh, pay in order to use Unreal Engine because they also own that. So is the rest of that revenue coming from licensing out Unreal Engine or I don't know. Maybe. I actually, I never even thought about that. The thing I've been thinking about is the fact that 5.6 billion dollars is being spent on skins yep that's all i've been thinking how many kids are uh, <laughs> uh selling the the mom's uh, credit card yeah take taking the numbers off of it i mean i guess if you really want to play as psycho from the borderlands series then did they have that for a while? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a psycho skin from the Borderlands in Fortnite. I actually didn't know that. I'm not gonna get it, but still, like Master Chief, God of War, or uh, Kratos, and like, I mean, Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn just released like a few weeks ago, I think. And even uh, Lara Croft is in it. Yep. Oh my Leo gosh. and Sun Lee, it's crazy forgot about chun Li and ryu yeah no it's getting really crazy with um fortnite it's becoming the uh third person shooter uh smash, smash bros Earth. uh yeah so that that's pretty much like the most uh news that uh, gaming's had recently but it still is a really interesting time for gaming specifically because this is probably, uh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is probably uh, the first time that we've had like a case where gaming was almost in a good light, mm -hmm. just almost in a sense. Usually, a lot of the big court cases are video games, violence, guns, violence, stuff like that. Um, a lot of really weird targets towards video games when really they have not that much correlation mm -hmm. um but yeah i'm i'm really excited to see where this goes i'm excited to see how many secrets they're actually gonna uh share mm -hmm. yeah. uh so moving on to the the main topic of all of this um we are going to be talking about the upcoming games for 2021 uh and pretty much we will be starting with the games that are coming out like right now literally for us um it is coming out tomorrow uh some of the big games and then we will cut it off on our august 31st you know from spring to summer let's see what um games are coming out the thing that i found really surprising when i was looking up like what the games are coming around for uh the summer is the fact that xbox has absolutely no exclusives it seems kind of weird that, like, you know, all, all I've been hearing about since last winter is PS5s and all the Sony exclusives. But then when you look at, like, I don't think I've heard anyone really talk about getting an Xbox Series X or... Play. Go ahead. 
No, go ahead. Uh, the only time that I've really heard people say, oh man, I kind of want to get an Xbox Series X or most of the time, actually, it's an Xbox Series S. Right. Um, it's mostly due to emulation yeah, because yeah. PlayStation 5 is just a system really for PS4 and uh, the PS5 games. There's really no place for three and below mm -hmm. um, where you can actually play games. Yet with Xbox, it seems to be that um, you can you play can... a lot of older games. I think you can play back to the 360. And I thought that it was you could go all the way back to the original Xbox because that they, they brought some of that stuff back with um, the Xbox hmm. One. Well, I don't know. I mean... To be frank, I already have the PS5, so I don't really care. It's one of those things where I'm still kind of like, I don't know. I'd have to see how many benefits there would have to be for me to say, okay, I have to get a Series S. Yeah, maybe that'll be for when we're potentially rich. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> we'll hit it big. Hey, who knows? You're selling plasma or something, so... Uh, it's only knows? $20 a pop now. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm, they're going to have to pop my vein a little bit. That's going to be sick. Uh, hopefully I don't get another scar or something. <laughs> All uh, right, so uh, let's move on to the uh, upcoming games. So Let's today, start it off. Yep. Yeah, uh, today or tomorrow, I don't know if we have any international listeners, uh, but yeah, on, the, on May 7th, uh, Resident Evil Village... Uh, will be releasing or has released depending on where you are uh, Mike do you want to talk more about that because obviously I know that you are way more excited for it than I am I already have it just completely bought over at GameStop I am a huge Resident Evil fan um, I really started in high school and it was all because Resident Evil 1, it was, you know, the spooky mansion type of feel. It was Luigi's Mansion for adults. That's how I always talk about Resident Evil. And more and more, the uh, series got into the action-based stuff instead of um, the horror adventure yep. style. And from what I'm seeing, I'm actually really excited because Resident Evil Village, it is more action oriented than let's say Resident Evil 7, where that was more the horror type, uh, you know, Louisiana uh, swamp house type right. of feel. This is starting to become more of that action Resident Evil 4 village style. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm still really excited because when you do get into the... Um, mansion from what it looks like i've played some of the demos from what it seems like it still has the action but it still has some of those horror elements that the original resident evils had uh take it for example resident evil 2 they had mr x um where pretty much he'd follow you around all the time and you just feel like you there was no way to escape anything um mm -hmm. And with Resident Evil 8, it has that action, but it also has a lady, I'm going to butcher the name, Dimitrescu. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much she's the tall lady, like eight feet, something like that, LeBron James level. And um, taller than LeBron James, I'm pretty sure. But still, yeah. no matter what, terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Gorgeous too. But let's uh, move on to another topic. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, so considering that we took a while on Resident Evil Village, I think we should probably uh, pick up the pace. So in one week, Mass Effect Legendary Edition will be releasing, which is all three games, uh, all three original Mass Effect games remastered for uh, current consoles. Yes, and the good news is if you have a PlayStation 5, you will be able to get 60 frames per second and 4K resolution. But from what I've heard with um, Xbox Series X, you are able to get 120 frames per second. I'm not exactly sure about the resolution. I'm having a feeling that it's one of those frame rate uh, optimizations. Yeah, performance or resolution. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to take a guess and say that will convert it into a 
almost 1440p instead of native 4k potentially 1080 who knows Um, yeah but no matter what these games they're fantastic you get the whole trilogy it's going to be absolutely phenomenal i am absolutely excited and the upcoming game after this is literally another week after it's just week after week of hit games and this one is a nintendo exclusive this is metopia um this is a remake remaster of remake Uh, i'd say remaster honestly okay sorry i couldn't (laughs) hear (laughs) yeah um i yeah so remaster um of a 3ds rpg it's a very simple one but you get to get some me's and pretty much make an adventure with some of those creations that you have. The cool part about this one is the fact that you get to create just about any me and download any me from the internet. And Max, I have a feeling that you have a few experiences with Metopia. Uh, yeah, like, for example, uh, the first village you come across, you can choose which me which uh how you populate your village with different me's so uh for example there's the first character you meet the carefree guide you can choose them to be anyone and you can find me's on the internet so uh i forgot who i decided oh right yeah i made my carefree guide danny devito uh that's just like the surface level of the insanity that you can make with uh this game it's also quite funny because i've played through the 3ds version and uh yeah it actually has a lot of heart and uh again it's simple but sometimes all you need is just uh some good personality for a game like that exactly so Coming up next, um, four days after Metopia, is Biomutants on May 25th. Um, I'm not exactly sure about this game. This is actually kind of my first time uh, looking at it, and it's really interesting because it looks almost like Rocket Raccoon is mixed with Cloud Strife. Yeah, I guess. Um, honestly, I'm not exactly sure, but it is... Um, going to be the major uh game from thq nordic which is um a revitalized uh studio that is making all sorts of things like darksiders 3 some of those remakes like um the spongebob battle for bikini hot bottom uh, rehydrated version um they they've been really working hard uh with all this stuff and if this is going to be their next big triple a title I think that this is going to be good. Right, yeah. All right, Uh, so next up on the 25th, the same day as Biomutant, is going to be uh, SMT3 Nocturne, which stands for Shin Megami Tensei. But uh, yeah, it's an HD remaster of the original, which was released in, I think, the mid-2000s. And if, if you have no idea what that means uh it's the game with the featuring dante from the devil may cry series uh symbol on the cover and uh what i'm excited about is that they're actually bringing that back as dlc this time though except uh dante will be voiced by ruben langdon who has done his voice since uh devil may cry 3 so I think it'll be pretty fun, if not very, very difficult, because Shin Megami Tensei games have that reputation. I'd say that if you uh, finish Metopia and you're like, I want more, I want challenge, then I recommend getting Shin Megami Tensei 3. It's a pretty intermediate (laughs) RPG I can't even finish. No, no, it's like... It's for like the hardcore type of RPG players. (laughs) Um, this ain't your mama's RPG. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even for me. It, it gets really hard. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Going into June, uh, there's going to be four games, and it's kind of a, a small one, but um, 
there are probably two games that are really big, I'd say, for mm-hmm. this uh, month. One of them is the uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for the PS5, exclusively for PS5. Um, you know, I, I've actually been thinking about going into the, the remake of Ratchet and Clank from PS4 because mm-hmm. I saw the state of play for this new Ratchet and Clank. And I really got to say, it blew me out of the, the park here with this one. I mean, I was just really interested interested especially because they are able to just flip-flop between levels just with a a swing of a a wrench yeah yeah it seems like a really cool concept uh i mean i'll be honest i don't really uh care for ratchet and clank too much but if i see good things about it i might go end up going to get it well Good news is if you have a PS5, I'm pretty sure Ratchet and Clank is free for those people just right away. So I would recommend touching up if you haven't played it. I know I'm about to do that pretty soon uh, for the the wait. And I think that this should be a really, really exciting one for, for Sony players. Right. Yeah, and then our next game will be uh, Guilty Gear Strive, which releases on the same day as Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Uh, It's a continuation of a fighting game series known as Guilty Gear, uh, made by Arc System Works, who also do, like, Dragon Ball Fighters and uh, Blaze Blue. But uh, this one is appearing to be more, uh, more of a fundamental fighting game, so it's less, like, super long combos and more just, you know, basics. But well, but I haven't played it. There have been plenty of betas, but I haven't gotten around to playing it. So I, I'll have to see when it comes out, I guess. Yes, I am excited to see how that goes. But um, the upcoming game that is coming out 11 days after uh, Guilty Gear, which is on the 22nd now, it is the Dungeons & Dragons game Dark Alliance. There hasn't been a lot of gameplay, if any at all. And... Um, it's actually looking really good. It's almost looking like a Left 4 Dead uh, fantasy style game. Maybe. It, it could actually be Division. Again, uh, there's really no uh, gameplay or too much talk about this, but I think uh, in the next you know month, we should be seeing a lot about this game, and I'm really excited to see how this looks. Right, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I wish there was more to say about it, but I, I, I really like Dungeons and Dragons and seeing a game like that, it should be good, I'm hoping. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see, uh, three days later, there's Mario Golf Super Rush, which is a uh, continuation of the Mario Golf series. And from what it appears from the only trailer they've shown, uh, the main gimmick will be that you're able to all take your turns on the golf courses at the same time in a certain mode of the game. So, uh, yeah, it probably it promises to be uh, pretty chaotic, considering everyone's going to be taking their turns at the same time. I thought that I remembered the video. You could actually, like, pretty much sabotage them and like punch them and stuff almost like a mario party game oh yeah yeah i think it might be like oh you have to get to the hole first instead of it's just it's just a mario party game glorified as a a golf game actually yeah Mm -hmm. uh so i'm i'm excited to see that i like how wario looks specifically in this one uh if i would recommend looking up this uh mario golf wario look because it is snazzy um but with that ending, we are about to get into July, and there are, again, only like about three games uh, for uh, July that have been announced. But some of these are pretty hard hitters, especially if you are really into the anime RPG likes. Uh, starting off with Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin for July 9th. Now, this one I am actually really excited to see because Monster Hunter has been really hidden its stride uh, ever since World. And I think that with the uh, 
you know, pretty good Monster Hunter Stories 1 for the 3DS, getting it on Switch and having some really cool looking designs for characters and RPG styles. I think this is going to be the redefined version that's going to be the uh, hard hitter. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, I played Stories on the 3DS and it was a pretty solid game, but uh, I didn't get too much into it, so I can't really make a judgment on it you know but yeah i'm excited to see where the second one will go Mm -hmm. yeah that's what a lot of people have been saying about the uh, original monster hunter stories i haven't really heard too many people that have full-on finished the game so um to people who would want to contact us especially on our twitter page uh definitely talk about some of that stuff with us um The upcoming game after that is in uh, a whole week, uh, which it will be The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Now, this is going to be a remaster of Skyward Sword that was on the Wii back in, I want to say, 2012. 2011. 2011. Wow. God, mm-hmm. I feel old. Uh, but this should be really interesting because you will be able to use the Joy-Con for the sword like you did with the Wii Remote Plus. Um but the good news is if you do have it portable, you are able to use the right stick as your sword too, which I shockingly predicted right before the direct actually happened. Yeah, I could. I can, I just want to see what other things they've changed because, you know, a lot of people complain about a ton of different aspects that aren't just the motion controls, despite the motion controls being chief among them, honestly. But yeah, uh, I'd like to see what else they changed personally, but that's yeah. I'm I'm really excited to see that Thai won't be as annoying as she was back with the Wii Remote, um, because she would usually um, be really annoying to me more than Navi because she would you know like alert you. She'd have like the Wii Remote do those little sounds and stuff. And you go in and she'd be like, Master, your batteries are low on your Wii remote. I'm like, I know, Fi, you don't have to tell me. But the worst part is, it wasn't just the batteries, it was the hearts too. If you were low on hearts, immediately she'd just start like buzzing on the Wii remote saying, hey, your hearts are low, you should have some health. I'm like, yeah, I get that, no dip. (laughs) Yeah, uh, I think she's the reason why I'm so paranoid about battery now, like... I'll look at my controller, it'll be like, oh, there's two out of three bars left on this. Better plug it in. Like <laughs> she created a phobia, and <laughs> that's something that Navi will never create. So mm. uh, <laughs> going on to the next game, it's going to be Neo. The world ends with you on July 27th. Now, I've only started the world ends with you. Um I've been meaning to actually play it, but I just haven't gotten around to it. It's part of that backlist that is just looking at me with such malicious like intent. Um, I'm, I'm really scared about <laughs> some of the backlog that I have, but this is definitely one that I'm really excited to see, especially because this is actually meant for newer consoles. It won't be uh, because the original was a DS game, it's gotten ported to like the Switch. And because of that, some of the controls are just a little bit more clunky, I'd say, because it was like, okay, you get a touch screen, but also you have buttons. Um, so having it on like the uh, screen, you know, and having it non portable, I can only imagine it got really weird. So having a game that's actually meant to be played on like a PS4, PS5, and Switch, that's got to be great. Right, yeah. I can see that. But uh, considering your personal gripes of Tetsuya Nomura, I'd like you to know that he's the producer, or one of the producers. You can see it in the clothing. He has a way with clothing children to look like Kingdom Hearts characters every single time he gets. I have a gripe with him all the time. He's a good character designer, I'll give him that. He grew in Final Fantasy VII Remakes and... <laughs> uh, it's a matter of opinion. Anyway, <laughs> uh, 
on to August. Uh, we've only got two games, and one of them is on the t- will be releasing on the twenty fourth, and that's uh, Kana Bridge of Spirits. That game has is an exclusive to Sony, uh, PS four and PS five. I am excited to see more about it because this is a brand new IP. Um, still not exactly sure what it's going to be about. That's a, what a lot of uh, Sony games have been like for the past couple of uh, games. Like Ghost of Tsushima, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I actually ended up loving it. And then Returnal was the same way. Wasn't sure if I was going to end up liking it. Now it's one of my game of the year contenders. Hmm. So um, uh, I'm always looking forward to seeing what Sony's got to offer. Um, right. So the next game, uh, I am... Again, looking at that backlog, it is No More Heroes 3, which is going to be uh, releasing on August 27th. I am still on the first game. I got maybe about halfway through and then stopped. I don't know why. Okay. Um, but otherwise, this series, it's crazy that it's actually coming back uh, mm-hmm. after, oh God, probably being gone for maybe like 14, maybe 13 years. Uh, they did release that uh, Travis Strikes Back back in 2018, which was a continuation of the story rather than of the gameplay. I always thought that was more of a spinoff. Yeah, it's kind of a spinoff, but it's after No More Heroes 2, so hmm. it's set after that. I actually didn't know that, so... I guess if you really want to keep with that continuity with story, I would recommend get playing that one too. <laughs> um, but otherwise, that's that's pretty much the end of all the games that we thought were really interesting, really cool that are coming up. And I really got to say, I re- think that Nintendo took the cake with the, the exclusives. I think Sony did great with like Ratchet and Clank and uh, Kina. But really with Metopia, with Mario Golf, with the Monster Hunter Stories 2, Skyward Sword, and No More Heroes 3. This took up very close to about like one third of all the games that are coming out. And not that many of the exclusives that aren't Nintendo um, actually cross that. Um, Most of the games are multi-platform. Mm-hmm. So honestly, this is, uh, seems like Nintendo's really uh, getting a lot of sleeper hits, I think, that are coming along. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But um, anything else that you would want to say about these uh, games that are coming up? No, no, not really, not on my end. Yeah, all right. Man, oh my gosh, this Pepsi is doing wonders to me. (laughs) Not in the good way. But... uh, (laughs) The the next uh, upcoming thing that is coming around it is the game recommendation. So pretty much we will pick a random game. We'll put a little list, pick the random you know thing from a list, and then we got to talk about this game, why we love it so much. And the game that we got was Bayonetta, the original, the first, the awesome, the masterpiece. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've played through it all, like, a few times, and it's just, like, a great game overall. Uh, From the people who, for the people who don't know, uh, it was Hideki Kamiya's uh, take on how he would continue the Devil May Cry franchise, since he was the one who directed the first game. Uh, When he went to Platinum Games, he decided to you know, do a spiritual successor type thing. And that's how uh, Bayonetta came along, which is honestly quite different from Devil May Cry, but uh, you can see some of the roots in it. Yeah, no, Bayonetta, it's a character action game, uh, very much like Devil May Cry, but I absolutely love it because it really focuses on the action. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the the story is the best in the series out of the two. Um, but gameplay wise, you know, it's did do a lot of great things, but there were, in my opinion, just a few missteps, like with some, some of the quick time moments. events. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so again, for those who don't know, uh, 
Bayonetta grades you based on how much you're hurt. Uh, first, how much? Yeah, how much damage you take? Uh, how how many combo points you get, and how quickly you can like go th- get through enemy encounters. And it drops your grade considerably if you die. And uh, in the middle of cutscenes. They'll have these super fast quick time events to take where you have like one second to react or else you die. And that counts as a death for the level. But uh, other than that, it's a excellent game. Uh, I realize that we didn't give it the best first impression, but no, no, no. The, these are things that I personally think are things people should know about, especially because I didn't know that quick time events were going to be in that. And immediately I was like, oh man. So you like, have, you've been warned, honestly. Yeah, it, it isn't like the like God of War where the quick time events kill you, but then it just brings you back to like the beginning of the quick time event to try again. No, it pretty much puts you at like you died, continued, but they like say, we'll remember that like a telltale game. <laughs> And then you're, you're gonna get, get a lower score. Then you'll get the the Enzo reward, which Enzo he looks like um like a fat egg, and he has like a Brooklyn accent. You think yeah, yeah. like some New Yorkian accent, and he's just like you know forget about it and stuff. And uh, yeah, no, I I personally love the dude, but he is like the lowest of low type of uh, trophies you get for the grading system. Mm-hmm. So. The amount of times I got an Enzo trophy just because I didn't press B within one second, um, you have been warned. But otherwise, the rest of the game, the combat is some of the best. Personally, in my opinion, sometimes better than Devil May Cry, especially the uh, first, you know. Yeah, especially the first. The first game. Uh, This game is just really really set the bar when it comes to character action and it was big enough that it actually did make it into smash bros so yeah uh bayonetta of course is the representation for the series and uh bayonetta represents smash bayonetta. Four, it was completely broken for a while <laughs> so yeah she isn't that broken though in the game so uh you're gonna have to actually do the heavy lifting here but it's a lot of fun yeah uh one more feature uh that's really cool that usually draws people in uh it's called witch time uh it's when you dodge an attack in game uh at the very last second you get the ability to slow down time as long as that attack animation is going which means you get a you can get like easier combos in because you know the enemies are moving super slowly and you can move at normal speed Mm -hmm. also uh further disclaimer the game is very suggestive i would not recommend you walk you play it with family in the room it's uncomfortable It, it is empowering and you will like it so yeah that too With that being said, I'd say that that was the end of our podcast. Um, and honestly, this is going to be the the end of the season. So we will probably see you next uh, semester, if not in the summertime. I'll have to talk with my boss to see what happens. But uh-huh. in the meantime, thank you so much for listening to us this semester. We hope to actually hear some feedback from you guys. See, Think about what we could do to make this even better and really hit it off so we can be your gaming podcast. In the meantime, see you, everyone. Bye.